Um, but I'll make a stab by emphasizing some of the points. Uh, just two points I'd like to make. I've managed, unlike my friend Paul, to resist the temptation of throwing in lots of intraoperative pictures and slides of livers and things. Because I think that's what we certainly love to do and doesn't necessarily advance any argument. Secondly, I think before we go, I must reiterate at the Royal Free, we are committed to the splitting program nationally and we've supported the mandated split policy where all donors, as were already outlined by both Professor Davis and Andrew, uh, who meet criteria which are selected and good donors are offered for split no matter how urgent our own recipient is. And that's a dilemma we do face. So that is the premium. We think it's a good option for sick uh, children. It does place risk on the adults. And that's what we want to talk a more about today. feed of each other to improve. So we have had at once in transplantation, the segmental anatomy that uh, Paolo mentioned resulted in transplant children who were, between the 1980s and 2000s, we had a big frame shift change in the way we were transplanting people in terms of using the livers which were very marginal, manipulating them, splitting them, to, because before that period children were dying with it, because as was mentioned, thankfully there aren't that many very small donors. And, and actually yeah, performing the splits for children effectively uh, took great care of the deaths and the uh, waiting list for the kids. And it very effectively too. So I think I don't need to go into detail to how things have moved on between the 80s and the 2000s. And it has become very much an established thing, which does not mean that it's not without problems. And, and just to reiterate this is what has been said, that our understanding of the fact that the liver has different parts of the liver has its own blood supply to and drainage of blood and bile from it, which allows a functional unit to be subdivided into functional subunits. And the traditional split that we're talking about here, of course, is So this is a traditional split uh, for the adult and children where the much smaller left lateral rows, two and three, for the child. And you can see the uh, blood vessels here are divided. And this is where we incur the, the technical risks, apart from all the other risks of, of any other marginality in the graph of a bit of fat or time. It adds on the sort of what was mentioned as the prolonged polythemia time. But the technical factors of this, when you divide the blood vessels, uh, they often really reconstruction, they last most of the finer, and they are more prone to problems, which are inherent in any transplant anyway, but are increases with the transplantation. I won't discuss the so called full right, full left, which has been mentioned for smaller adults, is a viable option. Apart from that, this is not as well established. There are small case series of these being done successfully, but there is no doubt that they incur a much heavier penalty uh, in terms of the technical challenge that is posed in terms of failure of graft. Uh, and risks and complications. So I think we are fairly clear on the fact that for pediatric waiting list mortality, splitting selected liver is a very effective and acceptable way of alleviating gas for children. Um, there is not much doubt about that. And, and this is again, over the last, as I said, from the 80s to 2000, we had seen uh, from the US, big numbers from UCLA. Um, and of course from Kings, Germany, which have shown very good graph outcomes uh, for both adults and for children of OECD as well, to say that it's established. But obviously underlying that is the fact that transplantation is a difficult exercise as it is. And there is a little bit of surgical, if you want to do, you know, do difficult things that sort of perform. And not only do we want to do the high wire act, which most difficult transplants are, we want to make sure that we look I think we can do it with skill in the form and fashion. Don't really care about the difficulties, but I think it's important to remember that we don't always have the safety program when we have the risk that we incur for our patients and not for ourselves. So as I said, it is possible to get acceptable outcomes, but as always, 
most of the series are small series, some of them are big, but they're all retrospective. And what it proves that as surgeons, we are good at selecting patients. It doesn't prove anything about the organ itself. All it says is that if we can take very good quality organs, make them marginal, as we've said, and use them for very low risk recipients, we can get outcomes similar to a non-selected, which is not saying much. So it's not quite the same. It's not that split does not carry any cost. It is that if you select down, narrow down the, the donors and the recipients and put parameters around it, you can use your wisdom and knowledge to get reasonable outcomes. So I think those riders are important to understand. It's not a, a game without pain, as I'll come back to later. It, it does put restriction. And as has been mentioned, the dilemma we face is that the sick adults on the list on our waiting list now are not able to get access because all they have is marginal graphs. Any group graphs that we get are made marginal because we see the process of splitting. And that's something that we worry about. As I said, we must, just because it's a very effective way, it has been proven to be safe within private parameters. We should stop and think about what the impact is on the other list, in the list too. This is just one of the studies we show the same thing that you will get all the surgical series which show that the graph survival between whole liver donation after brain death and right side split graph. You just, if you just look at growth outcome unadjusted survival, you get you, the view can claim that makes no difference if you use split graphs or whole graphs. But what I was trying to underline is that if you actually do a risk adjustment, so what we are saying is we use the right loops on very selected recipients who have not that much of a medical community or medical need, maybe, you can get similar results. But if you actually look at one of the risk adjustments, then they, the splits don't do as well. Because as itself, the graph itself is a smaller volume and is marginal because of the technical and other ischemia and that we mentioned. This is one of the last series from the North Italian program, which is actually a story of success. The turnaround of the North Italian transplant program is something worth uh, being proud about and, and, and celebrating. And if they looked at this mandatory split and that they adopted, and this is, I think, uh, 1,500 patients out of which were 325 splits. And they were basically talking about comparing with the overall whole liver transplant with the left lateral, and this we call the extended or right right segment is the one I talked about, the classical split, or a full right, full left split, which is very small number, and I think not necessarily Germany. And if you look at graph failure overall, you can clearly see that with whole liver transplantation and left lateral, you get very uh, outcomes and much worse outcomes when it comes to the right of the recipient and the other. Um, and similarly, obviously, re transplantation depends on lots of other factors. But recipient death, again, compared to the whole and the left lateral, we incur a much higher benefit for the right of recipient. Uh, and, and these are all the facts of life. And they went on to try and look into it further as to what was well. And as I mentioned, it's seen as one of it, but technical factors are also taking their impact. Uh, with the, the smaller hepatic artery and anastomosis and the vessel, vessel reconstruction is made often needed, which make them prone to vascular complications of thrombosis, with resultant biliary problems and infections and that from there. And with a very interesting point, which I think is germane to us in the UK at the moment, where they said that splitting technique using leaving the higher structures on the left side. So this is one where I should have perhaps possibly put in a picture is we, the traditional split was to try and minimize the harm to the right side, leave the big vessels with the right side on the arterial side. Because arterial thrombosis and liver transplant is the fair problem because the new liver is very dependent on the arterial inflow for its own supply and more important for the virus. But increasingly we are seeing that the main trunk is being kept with the left. Uh, in the old days it wasn't that way. The left graph children usually, even with the left side artery, which is smaller, <coughs> is much bigger than their own artery. And in fact, the arterial thrombosis risk, which has always been a problem when kids fell dramatically when they started using splits. Uh, but now that we often see more the, left, the main trunk, and this was their normal policy, was to keep the high, arterial hybrid structures all the way down the main vessels to the left. And they felt that that had exposed their right arm recipients to a significantly higher 
histovascular complication that is ultimately infection in the leg. So they did this, and again, Professor Davidson made this uh, point already that you know, they also concluded that we are taking this very good selected graphs and converting them to marginal graphs. So they did an analysis in the same group, uh, comparing them with the marginal keramic graphs using these non marginal graphs which have been converted to minority. This was what was corroborated by them, that these are very similar to marginal graphs. <coughs> uh, which is not to say we don't use marginal graphs, which is just to take into account that that is a fact. And our uh, friends and colleagues from Cambridge went a step further uh, in a recent analysis. They analyzed the outcome of the, the split rights that they had received or done themselves and compared this to the so called internal doctor cardiac death. And some surprisingly, now there's been lots of responses to this, they found much better results for the DCD, which I uh, must say this is better than we would normally expect in terms of drop survival, we're not talking about patient survival. If we know with DCDs, drop survival is not as good, though with retransplant, we can get similar patient survival. And they found that in fact a split right loop did much worse than a DCD graph. Because we and one of the problems has been I had despite the news problem of the fifty percent increase in donor over the last five years that the NHSBD has achieved, this has been only thirty four percent more transplant and if you come to livers, it hasn't even been that much. Most levels we've gained have been very marginal DCD graph, which is one of the problems that we are dealing with at the moment. Um, so, overall, we can conclude that even for the bigger volume extended right graft, but especially for the full right from there, this is a compromised graph and we convert a very good graph into a marginal graph, which may not be appropriate and is not appropriate. So, we to use a very sick recipient. So, we don't use it for our superior recipients who need good volume of the liver and can't withstand complications. And we cannot also not use it for other very sick recipients on the list because of our agreed criteria, the need of the adult recipient on the waiting list is no longer a justification for not splitting a liver. And as I said, the outcome, even with the best livers which are used for split, and even in second recipients, are comparable to very marginal DCD graphs overall. This actually is being crystallized quite well paper which, as I said, uh, verbalizes what we're talking about is gain and the pain. And done by James Duberger, who's from Birmingham, but is the Associate Medical Director for NHSB. So, most senior medic we have representing the medical management in the transplant side, with Professor Biostatistics from there. And here you can see, as I said, encapsulated, and it's just worth reading, that one year after transplantation, splitting the world, and this is a, just based on their Birmingham patients that they use has resulted in a gain of life five years, five years, five life years, but we have rested the loss of six. So the gain does not quite match the pain. It's an important thing, because we would have hoped that gain and pain, if they match out, it's fine. Our pain is their gain, and there's no payback, but that's a different thing, and a different discussion over here. Even at five years, a gain of 25 life years whatever, is offset by 25 life years whatever. I mean, I presume if you take on, in any calculation where there's transplant benefit, kids will always do well, because you, there is more life years to add on. So if you take on, it may not be as much, but I think it is a significant thing. And I think most of us in society, and there are Ipsos more both adults will generally accept a lot more pain for a lot less gain for kids. But that's just an interesting study you just point, pointed out. The increased risk almost two times to the adult of the Brazilian split level. And this was just graphic from the difference. So the pediatric split, as I said, they, in some ways, almost better than the pediatric cohort. We've mentioned the increased risk of complications and the increased liver mass. Adult whole did much better than kids, but much better than the adult split. And interestingly, I came across this talk. I mean, uh, in the University of Birmingham, said there is a, a currently an ongoing, very much around what we are talking about, an analysis of the ethical issues surrounding split liver transplantation informed by stakeholder views. There's a 44,000 grant from the Queen's Hospital Charity, Professor Jan Newberger, who I mentioned before, and one of your colleagues, Mr. Bram Hall, uh, to look into the pros and cons. Because um, the level of disquiet even with the so-called adult transplanter does vary. With some of us are quite convinced that the pain is worth it, whereas others 
feel the pain of their adult recipients a bit more than the gain to the other people there, pediatric recipients. So, just to summarize, it is a delicate balance. Uh, I must reiterate that this is a commitment, and I think it is the right thing for adult recipients to accept the pain. But it's not as black and white as, as it may be portrayed. Because for pediatric recipients, the waiting list mortality is actually very low. Uh, um, the current Birmingham uh, is nearer zero percent because I spoke to their eyes yesterday. Um, but generally, the activity is, is low. And this has also been very helpfully pointed out by Mr. that the risk of live donors for adults. We know that in live donors, the less liver you take, the less risk you put on the donor. And for pediatric live donation, you need to take a smaller part of the liver. Can, in fact, even be sometimes in some series done keyhole, but or through a small gut. And it was a minimal of any risk on the donor and can successfully cater for the pediatric weight risk in some of these like patients. So it should only be really needed where they have no life donor, perhaps. There would be one way of looking at it. Conversely, you look at the adult waiting list. You mentioned the 15% mortality, 15%? Ours was 17% we looked at recently this year. And it's been 17, 19% for least. And that's the justification for us trying to push the life donor, putting a donor at risk of one in 200 chance of death, much more than a pediatric donor. And more importantly, what is not being talked about is our sick adults in the adult waiting list are being quite desperately marginalized. There's a discussion going on. We, there are something called an acute or chronic liver failure who may do well the transplant, but just do not have any access to the list uh, because there are just not enough organs uh, of the kind that they would need because they demand more development to actually get transplanted. So the balance somewhere needs to be achieved, and I think that's what I wanted to point out. <coughs> so, Balancing the need for the adult recipient and risk of death against the increased risk in the adult recipient and the impact of the waiting list is a dynamic and a balanced exercise that needs to be undertaken rather than a fight of to split or not to split. Life as usual is not black and white, but gray. Just, just because we can split, we need to just know the background, and not always just split. We need to remember the ultimate destination is for everyone to be able to travel. Thank you very much.